G'day guys and welcome to the third part of my Flashprint tutorial series aimed at beginners. Today we're going to be start looking at the support structures within Flashprint. There are two different methods of support in Flashprint. Uh, the first one is tree-like which is what we're going to look at in this particular video and I will look at linear which is the other in the next video. Now they should be uploaded together so once you finish with this one you should be able to jump straight onto the next. So to start off the tree-like support structure topic, I have already loaded in a reasonably complex model with some overhangs all over the place that if you just try to print like this on a, well, on a 3D printer, it'd come out probably a giant plate of spaghetti rather than this really cool oriental dragon looking creature. So the support button is on the right hand side, fourth from the bottom, one, two, three, four, yep, this thing here, which uh, actually looks like a resin support structure to me. But anyway, it'll open up this little dialog box up in the top left. Now, the first bits we got up here, the first option is support types. Two buttons, the left one is tree-like, the right one is linear. So we're not going to click on linear, we're just going to ignore that. We're sticking with tree-like. The next section is overhang threshold. Now, this has got a, uh, a angle degree where the higher the number, the less the amount of support required. So if you wanted to provide greater support, you'd put a lower number in there. And if you figured you don't really need as much, you can raise it up and that'll, uh, yeah, tell the program what it needs to support and what it doesn't. The next section is post diameter. So that's basically the trunk of your tree. A wider post is going to provide greater support, but will be harder to remove and require more filament to to print. But if you're worried about your supports getting knocked over, sometimes it's better to actually up that that figure a little bit and just you know sort of suffer with it when it comes to taking them off. Next bit, base diameter. So that's the uh, that's the part that's going to be actually sitting on the bed here. Wider base, greater stability. However, again more difficult to remove and Flashprint does have these little tool tips that pop up telling you a bit about that as well. The next part is the base height. Again, just increases the uh, the strength of the base and provides greater support. It uh, actually turns into sort of like a, um, a conical sort of figure that tapers off to the uh, to the tree trunk, if that makes sense. So it looks like an upside down ice cream cone. Uh, so that's, that's what that does. So it's basically six mil down the bottom tapering back to 3mm over a 6mm vertical height. Our next little selection is a checkbox touch platform only. So when you go to generate supports you can tell Flashprint I only want to generate supports from the build plate and that's it. Otherwise with this particular model we can see that there's some overhangs over the other parts of the model, if that makes sense, where realistically you need support and the only way for it to be able to generate it would be to generate it off, off the model itself. So, and well, to make it sort of simple, it's probably easy just to show you what it does. So if we leave it ticked, we're just gonna use auto support at the moment. I'll show manual in a few minutes. And we're gonna click that button and off it goes. It can take a little while to, to generate. This model will take um, longer than many just because there's a lot of complexities on it. So I'm just going to pause the recording and pick it up when it's done. So that's taken probably about 45 seconds to a minute to generate all of that, which is probably a little bit underwhelming because we don't have a huge amount of supports, but the, uh, the, you know, the program has to analyze the model to determine where the best places is to put them. So we can see we've got some tree-like structures generated from around the base of the model coming up to various bits and pieces, various points on it. But none of them are generating off the model itself. So that is with touch platform only selected. If we uncheck that box and hit auto supports again, you'll get a little dialogue saying it's gonna delete the current ones. Are you sure to continue? Hit yes and we will wait for it to do its thing yet again. And oddly enough, despite this one creating more supports, it actually didn't take much longer. But we can see that there is a lot more going on here. We've got supports generating from all over the place. And given the parameters we have set in here, and using auto supports, this is what the program believes is going to provide the best possible outcome when printing it. Now at this point, you could go, all right, I don't feel like uh, let's just let's just choose this little one here. You could go. I don't feel like we. I need a support here. The manually section here allows you to well manually add or remove supports as you desire. 
if you click remove they'll change color and when you hover your mouse button over it it'll change color yet again to light blue which is saying that it's it's selected that support a single left click will remove and it's as easy as that i've you can add them as well. I, I find tree-like supports are actually a little bit hard to add because you've got to left-click on a point and drag it up. And sometimes, like this is working reasonably well, uh, sometimes it can actually be really fiddly to try and get it because it sort of goes off on an angle and it's quite hard to control, I find. But yeah, it might work for you. And just you know, left-click the uh, button again to toggle it on or off. As you need so one click to turn on one click to turn off and you've also got clear supports if you so desire down here now the good thing about tree supports I find is that they I find them a little bit easier to clean up uh, post-processing so once the print is done I, I can clean them up with a lot less effort than, uh, than linear generally um, it does take longer to print though because we've got a lot of little things going on here and the print head needs to move all over the place to actually make it happen so keep that in mind when uh, when slicing these models it will probably seem at least on a model like this it'll probably seem like it's going to be really really long um actually might just uh might just uh demonstrate using standard just to show you what it looks like and here we have a freshly sliced model and we're going to go into slice preview let it load up its thing and it'll show the details up on the top right hand corner which if you hadn't uh, seen it before that's where you can just find out all sorts of information. So we can see that the estimated print time is, yeah, it's a decent one, uh, just over 31 hours. And keep in mind, this is an estimated print time, so it could change uh, based on your machine, and it's using 213.63 grams. Um, so yeah, look, I, I generally find that uh, tree likes will use less material, but will have a greater print time. So a bit of a trade-off there. And just while, just because I'm showing this, because I haven't shown it before, you can also see you know your basic settings in here at the same time. So yeah, that is our tree-like supports. Uh, hopefully, again, this has provided a little bit of information on how to use it and can get you get you cracking on your own models. So the next video will be on linear only, and it'll actually be probably a whole lot shorter than this. So I hope you'll join me for that subject as well. Thanks for watching.